The Challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King! One, you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, battling through storm and snow as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. In spite of the fast pace King set for the team, it was nearly ten o'clock before Sergeant Preston reached Grand Forks. King could see a group of men talking in loud, excited voices outside a cafe at the end of the street. So he wasn't surprised when the sergeant drove on past the inn where they usually stopped. Hi, King. Hi, Mr. What's going on here? Uh, sergeant Preston. Uh, there's been a shooting in the cafe. Mac heard us all out. Just the doctor and him's in there. And Scar. It was Scar Edwards that got shot. The sergeant took a step toward the cafe. King barked, asking to accompany him. All right, King. Come on, boy. Mounty and the dog entered the cafe. There was a man lying on the floor. Doc Mundy bent over him. Mac McLean, the proprietor of the cafe, stood beside him. I told you. Can I be of any help, Mac? Oh, you, sir. You sure can. How is he, Doc? Oh, he's alive. And this isn't the first bullet to puncture his ornery hide. Now, that's no way to talk about a man who's lying helpless and unconscious on the floor. Well, you may like him, but I don't. He's a mean one. Of course, the mean ones never seem to die. Who shot him, Mac? Jim Richards. Jim Richards? That's right. What are you so surprised about? Jim doesn't go in for gunplay. He did tonight. What was it all about? Well, I don't know for sure, Sergeant. Jim and Scar were having an argument down at the end of the bar. All of a sudden, we heard a shot, and there was Jim with his gun in his hand, and Scar slumping to the floor. You mean that Jim drew first? Must have. Scar's gun was only halfway out of its holster. Now, where's Jim now? He left. You didn't try to stop him? It didn't seem healthy at the time. But a couple of the boys watched him. He took the North Trail out of town. The North Trail? Well, it goes to Richard's Creek. Sure. Where his poor ass is mining camp. That's strange. What is? That he should go there. He and his father split up nearly a year ago. They never speak to each other. Well, don't forget his sister, Mary. She never had a fight with him. He might go to her for help. That's true. You're going to charge him with murder, aren't you? We'll wait until Scar dies before we do that. I'm afraid he won't. Too mean. You're sure, Doc? Yep. He'll be laid up for a while, but he'll live. Better call in some of the boys, Mac. We'll fix up a stretcher and carry him over to his place. Okay. You're going to arrest Jim, aren't you, Sergeant? Even if it isn't murder? I'll bring him back here. How much starts he have? Over an hour. He's most to the creek by now. All right. Let's go, King. The Sergeant King left the cafe, and then, without any thought for food or rest, they hit the trail to the north. At that moment... Jim Richards, having hidden his dog team in a woods outside the camp at Richards Creek, was trudging through the snow toward the big rambling two-story cabin where his father and sister lived. When he reached it, he stopped below an open window on the second floor. He scooped up a handful of snow, made a snowball, and taking careful aim, threw it through the open window. He heard a startled exclamation. A few seconds later, his sister Mary appeared at the window. Who's there? It's Jim. I've got to talk to you. But you can't. Not here. Dad warned you never to come back. This doesn't have anything to do with him. I want to talk with you. I need your help. Uh, well, all right. Go around to the back door. I'll be down in a minute and let you in. Make it fast. Jim started for the back door, alert for any sign of life in the sleeping camp. There was none. He climbed the back steps and waited. A light show in the kitchen. And then... Come on in. What is it, Jim? I I think I've killed a man. Oh, no. It wasn't my fault. He drew first. If his gun had him stuck in his holster, I'd probably be dead. I had to shoot. Well, then it was self-defense. I don't know whether anyone would make make anybody believe that. Well, who was it? A man named Scar Edwards. I suspect that he's had a lot to do with the gold robberies around here. Maybe he thought I had proof. Anyway, he was the one who started the fight. Where? When was it? A little more than an hour ago in the Nugget Cafe at Grand Forks. And now you're running away. Not exactly, but I, 
don't want to go to jail. It's McLean that owns the nugget, and he's a friend of Scar's. There were a lot of his friends around. I wouldn't have a chance if I went to jail. But what good will it do to run away, Jim? I want to hide out for a while. I want a chance to find out if the things I suspect are true. If they are, then maybe I can persuade people Scar drew on me first. I don't know, Mary. I'm confused. I've got to think things out. Is that asking too much? A chance to do that? But you can't stay here, Jim. Oh, of course not. I'm going up into the hills. To that cabin of mine on the other side of the canyon where I used to hunt. Well, why have you come here? It would have been closer if you'd gone straight to town. I know. I need some supplies, though. Please, Mary. Well, the keys of the storeroom are upstairs. I'll, I'll go... Listen. There's a dog team. Oh, it must be Red Morgan. He went into town early this evening. Some business of death. I saw him there. Why, he's the foreman of the camp now. He's taking your place. Oh, Jim, why did you and Dad have to fight? There was nothing wrong in what I did. You took money. To grub's sake, a friend of mine. A man who saved my life. Oh, I know how you'd felt about Tex. And I left my personal note in the safe. But you didn't say anything. Because Dad wouldn't let me have the money. He has his money now. I've paid off the note. Well, let's not rake up the past. What's done is done. And now you're running away from the law. If you can believe me, it was... Mary, that team's stopping out in front. Why would Red be coming here at this time of the night? I know why. He knows what happened at Grand Forks. He's come to tell you that your brother's a murderer. Well, we can't let him find you here, Jim. Right. Where's your team? It's hidden outside of town. He couldn't have spotted that. Go quickly, Jim. What about the supplies? I'll bring them to you. I'll bring them to you just as soon as it's safe. Mary, maybe I shouldn't ask this of you. To help a criminal. You're my brother, Jim. Now hurry. Okay. As the back door closed on Jim, there was a knock at the front. And Mary picked up the lamp and hurried through the silent house. Oh, I hope Dad doesn't wake up. We'll find out sooner or later. But not tonight. Howdy, Miss Mary. Oh, hello, Red. I, I thought it must be you. Dad's gone to bed. I didn't know. It's all light out the back. Well, yes. I, I was going to have a cup of coffee. Would you like a cup? Oh, no, thanks. It's getting late. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how were things in town? Oh, so, so. I'll see your pa in the morning. All right. Good night, Red. Good night, Miss Mary. I didn't say anything. But why? Didn't he hear about the shooting? Doesn't he know? Mary went back to bed. But she found it impossible to sleep. She considered the best way to get supplies to her brother's cabin in the hills. She thought of ways and means of helping him. An hour passed. She heard another dog team drive into the camp. Another dog team that stopped in front of the house. But even when she heard a knock on the door, she remained where she was. This must be someone with the news. Well, let her father answer the door. Let him find out from someone else. Judd Richards grunted as he swung himself out of bed. He slipped into a pair of trousers, put on a pair of moccasins, lit a lamp, and descended the stairs. Ah, that fool of a red. What's the idea of waking somebody up at this time of night? He's got nothing to tell me so important it couldn't wait a little. Hello, Judd. Sergeant Preston and King, come in, come okay. in. You uh, got my letter? Yes, Judd. That's why I came through here on the way back to Dawson. Sit down. This room's still pretty warm. I can't, John. Can't stay tonight. But you want to hear about the robberies, don't you? There's been another one. I'll start investigating them tomorrow, John. Right now, I, uh... Has your son been here? Jim? No, I... Uh, I'll talk about it. But I thought that everybody knew. I know you've had a quarrel. As far as I'm concerned, he's no son of mine. But I thought it might make a difference if you found out that he was in trouble. What sort of trouble? A fight in Grand Forks. So that's it. Common barroom brawling. So that's what he's come to. You don't think as badly as Jim as you let on. You can't think so much of him yourself, Sergeant, if you're here to arrest him. I didn't say I was, Judd. Can I talk to Mary? She doesn't know any more about Jim than I do. I don't see why you can't talk to me, Sergeant. Oh, hello, Mary. <laughs> it's always been a pleasure to see you. Oh, I, hello there, King. <laughs> he wants to know about your brother. You haven't seen him recently, have you? I've seen him more recently than you have. I see him every time I go into Grand Forks. 
I told you that I have no intention of breaking with him just because you and he have had a disagreement. And what's more, Dad... That kind of talk belongs in the family. You can spare the sergeant. What did you want to know about Jim, Sergeant? Where he is, that's all. What's he done? Well, I believe he thinks he's killed a man. Well, didn't he? I mean, that's a strange thing to say. Why should he believe something like that? Because there was a fight and a man was shot. He isn't dead, Mary. Oh. Uh, But why should you... He did the shooting. That's obvious enough. And if you find him, put him in jail. Is that it, Sergeant? Well, I might have to, Mary. Well, it may be wrong of me, but even if I did know where he was, I wouldn't tell you. If he's committed a crime... In my heart, I'm sure that he couldn't have. And I'm sure that you feel the same way. I might feel the same way myself, Mary. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I can't tell you where he is, and I can't help you in any way. And King and I won't bother you any more tonight. Perhaps you'll see us again in the morning. One boy. Good night, Good night. Good night. All right, boy. Up in front. Run, Jane! Run! But the sergeant didn't drive the team far. He called for them to stop when they reached the shelter of some trees on the high ground above the camp. From that point, he could watch the Richards cabin front and back. And after feeding the dogs, he sat down on a sled. King crouched beside him. I don't think we'll have long to wait for him. Harry knows where he is. I'll give it some good news. But you want to tell him. So wait until Dub goes back to sleep, and that's about all. King watched the house with his master. And when he saw the slim figure of a girl leave the cabin, he understood the waiting was over. The girl was wearing snowshoes and carrying a pack. She headed straight for the wooded hills. King looked inquiringly at his master. <laughs> yes, King, we'll follow her. But we'll have to give her a little start, boy. You can see the trail she's taking into the woods. You'll be able to follow her all right, won't you, fellow? <laughs> Once again, King worked as a loose lead when the sergeant started after the girl. The sergeant had said quiet, and although the other dogs understood the word, King reinforced the order with a growl. <laughs> the team moved silently and swiftly, and the only word from the sergeant was a warning they must not travel too fast. Easy, boys. Slower, King. <laughs> the trail climbed higher and higher into the hills. And finally, as they rounded a bend, King saw a canyon ahead. It was spanned by a narrow wooden bridge. And at that moment, the girl was crossing it. King slowed to a walk. That's right, fella. Stop right here. You see a light over there in the tree. Just got him. That's where she's heading. We'll leave the other dogs here, King. Come on. (laughs) The girl disappeared among the trees as the sergeant and King started across the bridge. Suddenly, when they were halfway to the other side, a scream shattered the stillness of the night. Come on, King. The Sergeant King ran toward the cabin. Now, in the light spilling from the open door, they could see Mary's limp figure lying on the threshold. The Sergeant reached her and lifted her in his arms. Mary. Sergeant Preston. Yes, Mary. You wanted to find Jim. There he is over on the bed. Someone's killed him. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's an important announcement. Beginning today, the challenge of the Yukon will be heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over most of these same ABC stations. Be sure to listen to another exciting adventure of Sergeant Preston and his famous dog, Yukon King, on Wednesday. And remember, beginning today, challenge of the Yukon can be heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now to continue our story. As Sergeant Preston helped Mary Richards to her feet, the girl pointed a trembling figure at the cot where her brother lay. He's dead, Sergeant. No, he isn't, Mary. But that red stain Your on the... Your brother floor. isn't dead. I can see him breathing. Look. I... Can you stand by yourself? Yes. Yes, I'm all right. Now. Let's see what we can do for him. Yes. He's been shot. But the wound's already been bandaged. Good job, too. He couldn't have looked... What's that? It's King, outside. What is it, boy? Oh, the dog, sir. That must be the... 
Oh, I can You wouldn't let me move. Step inside here with your hands up. Right. Tex Cameron. Hello, Mary. Tex. After all Jim did for you. You don't know what it cost him to give you that money last spring. And this is your gratitude to pay him back by shooting. Mary, you can't believe that I shot Jim. Well, what else can I believe? There he is, and here you are. Good thing, too. I'm the one who put that bandage on him. How do you happen to be here, Tex? I came through Grand Forks about 10.30. I heard about the shooting, and Jim had lit out. I knew about this cabin, and I figured this is where he'd go. I came straight here from the forks. How long did it take you? Half an hour. You had a dog team? Yeah, they're back in the woods. Go on. What'd you find when you got here? I heard a shot when I was about half a mile away. When I reached the cabin, I saw a man on the other side of the canyon bridge. He was heading down the trail. You didn't recognize him? No. And I didn't go after him. Not after I'd looked inside the cabin. What'd you see? Jim was lying on the floor. I carried him over to the cot and got some bandages and antiseptic for my kit and did the best job I could of fixing him up. You did a fine job, Dex. Well, then I, then I just stayed here hoping he'd come too. Finally, I saw someone coming across the bridge, and I decided to wait outside the cabin. Thought it might be whoever had shot him coming back. Well, I saw it was Mary and you, Sergeant. I'm sorry, Tex. Well, that's all right. I should have known that you couldn't have. But it's so awful. How about it, Sergeant? He'll pull through, don't you think? Oh, I think so, Tex. Doc Monday should have a look at him, though. I wanted to tell him about the claim. Your claim? Our claim. He owns half of it. I've struck it rich, Mary. Oh, that's wonderful. But it isn't nearly so important as... Well, can we take him home, Sergeant? Would your father want him, Mary? Oh, yes. He only needs an excuse to forgive and forget. If we're careful, it should be all right to move him. Well, then, please. I can really nurse him at home. All right, Mary. What's the matter, King? It seems to have found something. It's a bandana. I'll take it, boy. <laughs> Blood on it. Someone's wiped their fingers. Doesn't belong to you, does it, Tex? No. And it may be a clue to the man who shot Jim. There's a scent, and King will remember it. Here, boy, smell. The killer, King. They must find him. He sounds like he understands you. He does understand certain words, Tex. And killer is one of them. It was a friend of Scar's who did it. You mean to get even, Mary? No. Jim told me that Scar tried to kill him tonight because he was afraid of him. Because he was afraid Jim knew too much about the gold robberies that have been going on. Jim knew first. But he didn't. Scar did, but his gun stuck in the holster. And then when he failed, someone else tried. It makes sense, Sergeant. If Jim does know something about the gold robbery... He has no proof. They don't know that, though. Did Jim mention anyone else's name? No. We were talking in the kitchen, and just then Red Morgan drove into camp and stopped out in front. I made Jim leave by the back door. Red Morgan? He's our foreman now. Could he have seen Jim leaving your cabin? He was around in front, and Jim left by the back way. Sergeant, could Red have followed him here? Well, whoever shot Jim thought he'd killed him. Mary, you've given us a motive, and King has given us a clue. Now, let's put the two of them together and see what happens. We won't be moving Jim for a while. First thing I want you to do is take Texas team and go back to camp. If Red Morgan's around, then let him hear you say... The girl listened to the Maori's instructions carefully. If Morgan was at the camp, she was to ask him to go up to the cabin in the hills and watch Jim while she went for the doctor. If Red wasn't at the camp, he must try to find him in town. Finally, she started out. She drove her team hard all the way to camp. But when she drew up in front of Red's cabin, it was dark, and no one answered her knock. Then, without wasting any time, she turned around and headed for town. It was only 2.30 when she reached the forks, and the cafes were still open. She stopped at one of them and asked where Scar lived. She drove to the cabin, looked through the lighted window for a moment, and then hurried on to the doctor's. Doc Mundy was half asleep when he answered her knock. For a few moments, he couldn't understand what she was saying. You better start over again. Mary. All right, Doc. Now, this isn't my idea. It's the sergeant. I understand. You're just carrying out his orders. Yes. Now, someone, some friends of Scar's who was in on the gold robberies, tried to kill Jim. Yeah. We want that someone to know that Jim is still alive. And we want him to think that he's up in the cabin alone and helpless. Uh, got you now. The guilty man will try to finish the job. That's what the sergeant thinks. Now, Red Morgan and Mac McLean are over in Scar's cabin. I just saw them. I want you to drop in and see how Scar is. I told him I wouldn't be back before morning. The doctor has a right to worry about his patient. Mm, not that one. Oh, but doctor... All right, all right. I'll do it. 
Then what happened? Well, then I come in looking for you. Yeah? And I tell you that I found Jim, that he's wounded, but that you can save his life if you come quickly. We've got to let them know, Doc. Don't you see? Yes. I say I have to go home to pack my bag. That's right. Now, if one of them acts the way we think he will, then you'll have proof, and the sergeant will be able to make an arrest. It's a dangerous business, but I'll do my part. And so Mary watched the doctor walk down the street to Scar's cabin. And a few minutes later, she followed him. Her heart was pounding as she stood before the door. Who's there? It's Mary Richards. Please, I've got to see the doctor. They they told me he was here. What's the matter, Mary? You want me, Mary? Yes, you must come with me right away. Where? I found my brother. You found him? Yes. Sergeant Putson came through camp and he told us about Scar and everything that happened here tonight. I I didn't tell the sergeant, but I thought that Jim might have gone up to his cabin in the hills. I went there and I found him. Well? He's wounded. Somebody shot him. Wounded, eh? Yes. Oh, Doc, you've got to come with me. Well, I will. You can save him, I know. Well, I'll do my best. That's all I can promise. Is Jim conscious, man? No, but his pulse is strong. Oh, the doc can save him. Yeah, you're coming along fine, Scar. Good. All right, Mary. I have to pack a bag with some supplies before we start out. But we'll be on the trail in 15 oh, minutes. Please hurry, Doc. Did you give him any first aid? Yes, I did. I banged him. So I'm not the only one to make a mess of things. Shut up. You did it twice. How do you figure that out? First, when you let Jim catch you depositing golden dogs. And whose idea was it that it should be deposited instead of cashed around here? Mine, and it was a good one. You could have taken a look around when you went up to that window in the bank. And you could have made sure your gun didn't stick in the holster tonight. You had a better chance to shoot him. You said he didn't even have his gun belt on. Yeah, Red, why didn't you make sure? We can still do that. I'm going back there and finish the job, and you're coming with me, Mac. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. I took the gold out of old man with your strong box, but I handed it over to you and Scar. And Jim doesn't have anything on me. Huh, so you think you're safe. I don't want him killed. That deposit in Dawson was made in your name as well as mine and Scar's. If Jim tips off the mounties about it, you'll go to jail with us. It only takes one man to pull a trigger. There's no telling what may happen up there. I may need your help. I don't want any part of murder. Go on, Mac. I took my chance. We've had enough talk. You'll come. You can't make me. This gun says I can. But the girl and the doc. My team's out and back, all harnessed and ready to go. We'll be there and gone in plenty of time. Now move. Okay. And shoot straight. You first, Mac. Put that gun away. Go on. Red and Mac made good time up the hill trail. And when they could see the cabin ahead by the light of the full moon... Red stepped on the brake and called out to the team to stop. What's the matter? Why don't we drive right up to the cabin? This is close enough. There's less chance of our being seen walking. Keep to the shadow of the trees. All right, who's going to see us? Who can tell? There's nobody been up here but the girl. Yeah? Outside of you. Why do you suppose I didn't make sure Jim was there? You said you went inside the cabin. That's right, and I thought he was done for. But just then I heard some dogs and I left fast. Was it the girl? She'd have come from the other side of the canyon. Red, not the Marty. I don't know. It don't matter as long as nobody sees us or stops us now. The cabin's dark. Just as it should be. The girl must have put out the lamp when she left. Now keep quiet. See anybody around? No. There he is. You can see him under the blankets on the bed. Here goes. All right, up with your hands, both of you. Sergeant Preston King! I hear him all As the Sergeant King started toward the two men, the Mountie held the bandana down to King's nose. What does it belong to, King? King started straight for the man with the red hair, but his master called him back at once. Easy, fella, back here. So you came back to finish the job, Red. What are you talking about? I'll take your guns. I don't know what you mean. Oh? And what were you shooting at just now? Why, I... Don't uh... try to alibi and walk inside the cabin, both of you. The lamp on the table there, light it. We'll see what you shot, Red. Oh, I didn't know. Light that lamp. Hey, Red! What the... Nothing. Nothing in that bed but some rolled up blankets. You should have lit the lamp before you wasted your ammunition. Well, uh... Hey, what are you talking about? No crime to shoot at some blankets, is there? No, Red. But Jim was able to talk a little before Tex Cameron took him down the trail. He wants me to return the bandana you dropped when you were here earlier this evening. Here, catch. He said this is my bandana. He lies. This isn't mine. This 
This belongs to Mac. Oh, you dirty double-crosser. You're not going to pen anything on me. You shot Jim and you know it. That's all I wanted to hear. You're both under arrest. I didn't have anything to do with it. You'll be held for questioning in connection with the robberies at Richard's camp, Mac. Charge for you, Red's attempted murder. Jim couldn't have seen me. He couldn't have. I didn't say that he did. But his bandana. You said he wanted it returned to me. To the owner, Red. To the owner. It was only King who knew who the owner was. <laughs> Thanks for telling me, boy. Yes, Mary, come on in. It's all right. I'm just handcuffing this pair. So it was Red. Yes. King identified the handkerchief. Where's my patient? On my sled across the canyon, Doc. While covered with furs and resting comfortably. We'd better get him to bed. Well, how about that, Mary? We take him to your father's house? Well, of course, Sergeant. That's where he belongs. And so, at the end of that evening, Jim was taken home. When the little party reached the bottom of the hill trail, they could see Judd standing on the porch. And the sergeant left his prisoners in charge of Tex and went ahead to meet the old miner. Judd, can you see who's coming? Well, there's a lot of people. Red and Mary and... No, I can't make out the others. Man on the sled is your son, son. Jim? You mean... Is he dead, Sergeant? No. Then in that case... But he's badly wounded. That's Doc Monday will sight him. Well, you can bring him in here until he gets well. But after that, he can go his own way again. Judd, wouldn't you like to hear about how he was wounded? You've told me enough. The results of a disgraceful brawl, the result... The of... result of trying to help you. Huh? What's that? He's been trying to find out who's been stealing your gold, Judd, and he has. Jim is... Fa- he uh, stumbled on a clue accidentally in Dawson. Scar Edwards was depositing a lot of gold dust there. Afterwards, he tried to get more information in Grand Forks. He was doing pretty well, too, until the night. And then Scar and Red... Red? Yes, Red Morgan, your foreman. What? He was in on it. Scar and Red and Mac McLean. They decided Jim knew too much, and the only thing to do was... Get rid of him. It was for me. Scar started the fight in the cafe, and he meant to kill Jim. He would have, too, if his gun hadn't stuck in his holster. Then Red tried to kill him up in the hills. I'm ashamed, Sergeant. There's no need to be, Judd. Perhaps both of you are responsible for your quarrel. It'll only take a few words to set things right. I'm ready to say it. Well, here's your chance. Here we come. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, Judd. Oh, Dad. Dad, please don't say that you don't... Don't you worry. Hello, Jim. Hello, Dad. Welcome home, son. I want to shake your hand. That's that's a good idea. <laughs> thank you, Sergeant. And thank you, King. Seems to me, King, that the case is closed. <laughs> been a product of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated. Created and produced by George W. Trundle and brought to you each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next Wednesday to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. J. Michael speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. There may be a housing shortage, but Wednesday night there may not be for some contestants on Go for the House. This is the exciting show heard every Wednesday night over most ABC stations, on which contestants can win a beautiful new honeymoon house built on a suburban lot right in their own hometown. Each Wednesday night, MC John Reed King calls seven couples to the ABC microphone. These couples each select a room of honeymoon house to furnish and are given seven questions to answer. As they answer each question correctly, a prize of some home furnishing goes into the house. After the third question, they can take their prizes or go for the house. But to win the house, they must answer the special seventh question. Listeners also have an opportunity to win Honeymoon House. And for complete details, don't miss Go for the House on the air every Wednesday night over most of these very same ABC stations. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>